Hey, Flo Tennis Nerds. Today, I'm going to talk about spin versus power racket. It's a question I get a lot. What's the difference between a power and a spin racket? For example, a pure drive versus a pure arrow, an E zone versus a V core, and uh, these types of rackets. Pretty much all brands have spin rackets and power rackets. Dunlop SX versus FX, for example, as well. So both of these racket categories are stiff, meaning they have thick beams and produce a lot of power so good energy return from the rackets you're going to see that in the beam profile you should see how thick the beam is and that creates a lot of uh, energy return a lot of power it can also be stiff for your arms so you need to be a bit careful with these rackets generally with stiffer beams that they can uh, create some issues for your arm you're going to have a lot more vibrations traveling down to the handle and to the grip and then they transfer to your arm and then you can get tennis elbows. So you have to be a bit careful, string them in the correct way, lower tension, for example, maybe more arm friendly strings, uh, or if you don't have any issues, you don't have any issues, but that's something to, to keep in mind. But a thick beam that is for both a spin and a power racket, and I have a bunch of them here on the table, like the Eason 100, a new one, and uh, the V-Core 100, which is the spin version. So as you can see, the, the beams are, are pretty similar. And uh, this one is a little bit thicker, the E-Zone. So the V-Core is designed for more spin, the E-Zone more for kind of a flat power. So a more of a direct trajectory over the net. The question is, how do these spin rackets produce spin? You produce the spin, that's the, the thing. So imagine this is a tennis ball. So how you impart the spin is you obviously hit with this trajectory meaning that the ball will move a lot more on this plane so you're producing that top spin with this kind of trajectory when you're hitting a flatter shot you're moving more like that so uh, this is more of a flat ball this is more of a spin ball so you have that difference in trajectory and spin rackets are more engineered towards improving the aerodynamic properties uh, of this movement happening instead of this movement so uh, you usually see that in the beam profile, in the shaft here, and they usually have these spin shaft. What's interesting with the E-Zone is that it has kind of a, a similar uh, design to the arrow here, uh, but it, it's then a little bit different. But if you take the arrow, which is the most famous uh, of spin rackets, um, you know, endorsed by Rafa, many players on the ATP Tour, Manarino, Van der Sanchul, Cressy, um, use this on the WTA Tour, Leila Fernandez, uh, Daniel Collins, so a bunch of players there as well. And what you're seeing with this is that uh, a more open string pattern will help to produce spin. Why? Because you're going to have more movement. So you want movement for the, from the main strings. That's how you want to create the top spin. So when you're brushing up the ball, the bigger the spacing, uh, the more the main strings will move. So they will move and snap back into place, creating the top spin effect. So that's what you're looking for in a spin racket. And um, so they have this design with the shaft being kind of flat here and curved around here. And that's a very typical way uh, of a spin racket, a typical spin shaft for, to improve this movement. Uh, but they also have something called um, spin grommets and several brands do this. Uh, Bablat has it up here in the center mains and Dunlop does the same thing and I think Head does the same thing as well. And the spin grommets uh, are designed to increase the movement of the string. So they're a little bit different uh, and a little bit more open to improve the movement of the main string. So player hits the ball. Uh, generally you want to hit the sweet spot which is where you know usually the size of your hand and uh, depending on the racket of course but this is the average strings will bend and then move out of place and then go back and you're going to generate a lot of top spin uh, with that movement so usually they have spin grommets wider string spacing and a more aerodynamic profile and these uh, things all help spin potential uh, the more power oriented rackets like the pure drive the e zone 100 uh, the difference mainly is that they don't have spin grommets and they usually have a, a tighter pattern in the center. That's what you're seeing. So you're, you're, you're seeing a little bit more control uh, from these rackets on flatter shots. So more for this kind of movement than this kind of movement. So you're not getting the same kind of top spin potential. And, uh, but overall, this, the beam is thick. Uh, so there's a lot of free power and there's not huge difference in this uh, design here because this one is quite similar in some ways to the arrow but it, it's more flat here uh, so you will see different 
you know, approaches to, to spin rackets, power rackets. But these are some things you see over and over again. And uh, that's really the main difference. And, and with the V-Core, it uh, has a slightly different profile here, a little bit more boxy. But here they have these kind of aero fins, which are supposed to increase aerodynamic properties. Not sure if that really works. It looks a little bit silly with these, but maybe that they work. Same here. Uh, you have some indents here that you can feel. And they extend the, the main strings to create more you know, movement of the main strings with like a channel here. So that's a different approach to, um, to a spin, but that's also a very spin focused racket. The, the latest spin racket I reviewed was the Dunlop uh, SX300. And that has this kind of V energy shaft they call, which is like an indent here. Uh, also to improve the aerodynamic uh, properties when you're doing this. And they have gone a bit further with the, with the spin boost grommets, they call them. It's supposed to create massive movement of the strings. Sometimes it can be too much. It becomes a bit too lively. There's too much movement in the strings and you don't know where the ball is going. So what you're getting with spin racket is you're going to get more string movement. You're going to get a higher launch angle, meaning that the ball will move a bit higher up. So if you have problems clipping the net, a spin racket could be interesting for you to try. Uh, if you really rely on pinpoint control and you're hitting flat and you want to hit the ball within this space, then uh, you, you need probably a tighter pattern. It could be a control racket. It could be something like a controlled spin racket, but you need a little bit tighter string pattern overall because you're going to feel like the ball is, is going out a little bit, sailing out a bit. You, you generally need to hit with bigger targets. That's why you import so much top spin. So you're playing with bigger targets. So, you know, look at Rafa, how he built his game around massive top spin and always trying to go for bigger targets. So that's the whole idea with these spin rackets. Uh, it's really a personal thing whether you should use a spin racket or a power racket. Uh, I tend to give a few ideas and then it's up to you to test and demo because uh, we're all different. Some players who hit a little bit flatter might like to have some extra help with the ball trajectory. Some players might hate it and want to you know, get the more as much, as much control as possible. And I'm going to dive into each different category of rackets and my favorite ones currently uh, in upcoming videos. So please subscribe to the channel. And if you want more in-depth stuff, you go to patreon.com slash tennis nerd and join there. So that's spin rackets. It's all about string movement, all about creating that vertical uh, movement when you're hitting the ball and, and you're maximizing top spin. Uh, might not work for you, might be a great thing. Uh, they're generally very powerful kind of similar in power to power rackets. Uh, so it's all depending on, you know, if you're playing with a lot of topspin and you want to accentuate that, or if you're hitting flatter and you want a little bit of help, uh, these rackets can work for you. There are also controlled topspin oriented rackets like, you know, um, 98 square inches where they have an open pattern and a more aerodynamic design. And I'll, I'll list my favorite rackets uh, of that category and I'm going to list my favorite spin rackets in an upcoming video so stay tuned but that's the main difference between a power and a spin racket. Are you using spin rackets? What's your opinion about them? Let me know in the comments below and uh, we'll dive into the best spin rackets in my opinion soon and uh, remember that rackets are always personal so uh, what, works, what works for one player might not work for you and using the racket of your favorite pro uh, might not be the best choice, you know? So you need to find what works for you. What feels good uh, is mainly the best ingredient. The feeling when you're hitting the ball is what's gonna help you wanna play more tennis and also gonna, you know, improve your, your contact point and feeling of the sweet spot and so on. Thanks for listening to this video. I hope you found it useful. Uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel. As I said, you can also support me on patreon.com slash tennis nerd where you get more content, a chat function and so on. If you have any questions about rackets and strings, I would suggest you join there because that's the one where I reply uh, mainly. And uh, also, if you need to buy a racket, string, shoe, whatever, please uh, check out my affiliates, Tennis Warehouse, Tennis Warehouse Europe, or Tennis Only if you're in Australia. And if you want to kind of improve your game, you can check out Top Court, some great instruction there. I'm an ambassador of theirs because I really like their product. And if you want to improve your fitness, you can join uh, Tennis Fitness. Uh, my friend Nathan there, he has some great fitness programs that help me improve my game and improve my footwork mainly. And there's also Swing Vision where you can actually record your, your sessions, which I always recommend. And then you can get some data and, and also it cuts out all the dead time. So you don't have to sit there and edit everything. That's it for this one. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.